Hey, it's Keith. Today is a day we're going to talk about whether you're going to choose an AC refrigerator or a DC one. I'm going to go through the math. So let's get started. So as you can see here, I have a Magic Chef and it's running right now. It's very quiet. And the Energy Star label says it uses 327 kilowatt hours a year. And we're going to go through that in a second. But let's go through the meter because I feel like the math is really important. So what I had done is I plugged in a meter. We're going to go through the math right now, you and me. And I'm going to show you how I was thinking about it. But while it's running, I'm going to show you. Let's see how much it's running right now. It's using about 61 watts. And I had the freezer open because I just opened the door for you, right? But let's not focus on the peak because that's not a big deal because we have a 3,000 watt inverter. And by the way, by having an inverter all the time, it will consume some energy. The Victron, I think, on the paperwork said it consumes about 20 watts per hour, but more on that after. So let's talk about the two most important things when you're deciding on, um, like, doing the math on what should you get. And these are the two numbers. We have kilowatt hours, right? So we have right here, it says 2170, right? So you can pause if you want right now or get your pen and pad out and write that down. And the other number we have is 24169, which is in minutes. So we need to do a conversion, right? So if we go back again, we realize it's using, it used 21.7 kilowatt hours, okay? And we used 24169 minutes. So we need to convert the minutes, divide it by 60, and that's about approximately 402 hours, okay? So if we take those 402 hours and we divide it by the 2170, we're using about 18 and a half watts per hour or approximately 444 watts per day. Now I realize this is the winter time. I'm shooting this video, it's December in Southern California. So the weather's pretty mild today, but I really wanted you to kind of think about that and hold that, that number for a second, right? So with the Energy Star label, I'm gonna grab that again just to show you. It said it used 327 kilowatt hours per year. So how do we get the per day number? So we take the 327 and we divide it by 365 days in a year and we come up with about a 0.89 kilowatt, so a little under a kilowatt a day. And if we go back to this guy, what it just what I just went through, right? We went through the math. It uses about 444 kilowatts or a little less than half a kilowatt hour a day. So what that's telling me is that the Energy Star label is being conservative. And obviously, it's in the middle of the winter time right now, right? So let me uh, close this up. Let's talk about this. Some of the considerations that you would have before you decided to buy something. Because I think it's really important consideration. So I know that was a lot to digest in one little sitting, but let's go through it. So you have a choice, right? You can either get a DC refrigerator or an AC refrigerator. Now, I have a, a bigger box here, right? So I have 800 watts of solar that's feeding a 3000 watt inverter. And again, just for a uh, point of reference and noise, that's a refrigerator, it's pretty quiet. But back to the math. So as I mentioned in the beginning here, I my, my inverter uses about 20 watts per hour that we need to consider, right? So that's 480 watts a day that I'm basically using. It's what they would call a parasitic load. So that is on just waiting for something to happen. And that's again from the manufacturer. I haven't measured that yet, but that's what they tell me. And I have two 206 amp hour batteries. So I have about 412 amp hours of storage, but simple math, each battery is about 2,500 watts of available. So let's just call it 5,000 watts. So what does this all mean? It means that when you think about 5,000 watts, I'm using about, again, half a kilowatt a day, right? To run this refrigerator. I'm using about a half a kilowatt to maintain the inverter. So one kilowatt out of the 5,000 available, right? So as long as I'm in a sunny place, right? Now I'm in Southern California. And as long as I drive somewhere, I have two ways to charge my batteries, right? Or if I plug it into shore power, plug it into the house, plug it into a campsite or run a generator. So there's a bunch of other alternative ways. But let's talk about the math on purchasing decisions. And let's talk about what if something doesn't go well. So I bought this from a big box store, the big orange store. There's the blue store and there's the orange store. Now this thing costs about $220 for a 4.5 cube refrigerator. 
for you to get a 4.5 cube refrigerator that's DC, it's probably gonna cost north of $800, maybe more. And then the other thing is, is that if that refrigerator has some issues, now you gotta ship it back somewhere. Where the big blue and the big orange store, there's about 5,000 of them around the US. So if this thing has a bad day and it doesn't wanna work anymore, I can pull up and I can swap it out. So to me, that was one of the checkbox. It was more convenience than just if things go wrong, because invariably sometimes things happen. Now, if you spent, let's say five, six, seven, eight hundred or more on a DC refrigerator to ship that back to the manufacturer or to the manufacturer's representative, I know some people that cost at least that much just to ship it back. And you just heard the refrigerator go off. And again, we saw on that little thing, I'm gonna digress back to it. It only consumes about 60 watts when it's running. And I obviously have the door because I was making this video. So just rewind, Keith, back to where you were. So when you're thinking about making decisions, right, the $200 and $220 to buy the refrigerator versus five, six, seven, 800 plus, you have to factor that in. And then we talked about this idea of storage. So if you have a situation where you don't have the physical space like I have for more batteries or a larger solar array, when you think about the cost of a lithium ion battery today, let's just say a 100 amp hour battery, they're in the marketplace for three, four, five hundred dollars for one of these batteries, right? So quite easily, if you think about it, you could spend almost the same money, right? If you think, you know, even even, right? Like whether you bought a DC refrigerator for 700 or 800, and then you don't have to have your inverter running, so you can save a little bit of parasitic load there. But my feeling is, again, with my application, it, it made more sense to get the nicer refrigerator that has the space, the swappability, it's clean, it's nice, it's like a dorm room refrigerator. So that was to me was an important consideration if, it's, if I swap it out. And if I needed to buy one 100 amp hour additional battery uh, with my system to run this refrigerator, to me, that was the consideration. So again, your situation might be different. Maybe you're in a smaller vehicle where you don't have the physical space, whether you don't have a physical space for the refrigerator, or you have a smaller solar array, you don't have a lot of room for the, for the battery, then yeah, maybe it's better to go with a, a smaller DC refrigerator and because you only have enough physical space for, for maybe one or two batteries. So again, your application matters. But what I really wanted to do again and share with you today is like do the math, right? Like think about the Energy Star when you're doing that, when you're thinking about what the situation is. And again, the Energy Star, they did a really good job here on figuring this out. Again, this is annualized average, right? We talked about 327 kilowatt hours a year divided by 365 days, that's again 0.89 or so, right? That's about a little less than a kilowatt a day. So again, here I'm showing that I'm under a half a kilowatt hour a day. And again, I know when the summertime comes and it gets super hot or wherever I'm physically at geographically, then this is gonna consume more energy. Obviously it's predicated upon, again, what's in the refrigerator, may have stuff in the freezer and in the refrigerator area, all that plays into it. Anyway, I can go on and on about doing the analytics because I like being analytical about it, but these are some things that you should consider whether you maybe have an older RV or an older vehicle and it has a DC one and maybe it's towards the end of its working life and you're thinking about what to do. I also thought about, again, back to thinking about it is maybe it might ben benefit you if you're thinking about having a rig and you don't want to go through all that hassle. Maybe you get one little pocket inverter they make these small inverters that are 500 watts or 1,000 watts because we want to overcome also when the thing peaks, right? When it first comes on, this thing runs 60 watts when it comes on. So quite conceivably, you don't have to get a giant a giant inverter and maybe one small battery to operate this particular refrigerator. So that's another consideration is you're maybe finding, you're buying a rig and maybe you're buying a schoolie or some situation and you're like, hmm, I really don't know what to do. Well, just get a small inverter and get a small battery and just dedicate it that towards the refrigerator. So that could be your plan B and just kind of experimenting because I think it's all about experimenting when you're entering this domain. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, leave it below the video and I'll leave you a link to how to get this meter. And again, if you have a meter like this, you can go around your house, start plugging things in and seeing what it draws, whether it be a television, a cooktop, a refrigerator, any kind of appliance, you can kind of draw on a baseline and then apply that baseline to your application. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please comment below and please subscribe so you can get more videos like this. Have a great day.